So guys, you know, they say the electric cars are the future. Um, they also say the electric cars are actually here to take over gasoline engine cars. I actually argued this point not too long ago in a previous video, uh, which I'll link right above here. But I was actually sent a link to a car that I've never heard of before. And I do think this one actually might take over <laughs> or even begin the whole process of maybe changing the public's mind about range anxiety, um, the charging capabilities of an electric car. You know, all the all the negatives of an electric car, it seems like this company just solved it all. Um, the design of the car is questionable, but I can't really deny the tech behind it. And I wanted to bring that out, um, bring that up to you today and show you guys what I'm talking about here and, you know, see if you guys agree with my thoughts on the car. Let's get started. All right, so the car in question is built by a company called Eptera. So this car in the video is what we're what we're talking about today, obviously. Um, my friend sent me the link to this car saying he really wants this new car now. And the first, first thing I said to him was, what the hell is this Darth Vader helmet looking thing? I think it's very, very ugly. <laughs> In the traditional sense of a car design, I mean, they—it's that's like a spaceship on wheels. Um, obviously, you know, take a look at those uh, little monitors in the corners there. That were side mirror replacement. Um, there's a lot of companies pushing for that right now to build upon the whole aerody shame, uh, aerodynamics of the car so um, to get rid of uh, the extruding side mirrors. A big example of that was the Cybertruck when the Cybertruck first launched by Tesla. Uh, their prototype didn't have mirrors on the outside. It just had screens on the inside with cameras on the outside to look. So, I mean, that's something a lot of the companies are pushing for. Obviously, these guys are pushing for it as well. I don't know if the regulation is going to pass early enough for them to not have side mirrors when their cars come to come into uh, production. But, I mean, that's just the beginning of the technology that's in this car. We're talking a thousand miles per charge. So the range, range anxiety of the so car just went out the window. We're looking at the shape. Like, you know, we were talking 250 miles, 300 miles before in a lot of the electric cars out there. So taking a road trip across the United States was an ordeal. You know, you would have to drive for a couple hours, you have to stop and you have to charge for an hour and then you have to drive for a couple hours again, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to always plan out your route to charge your car. But having a thousand miles of um, range from a single charge means that range anxiety has just gone out the window. On top of that, another advantage is it's it has ability to um, solar charge itself. See those solar panels on the on the hood there and on the roof as well. Um, depending on the option you get, you can get up to 40 miles on just solar charge alone. So if you're a commuter and you're using this to a day day to day commute and it's less than 40 miles for you um, per day, in theory, you never have to charge the car because the char car will charge itself while it's sitting out in the sun in the parking lot. So even if, let's say, you live in an apartment complex that doesn't have a charging capability, if you're just commuting 40 miles a day, you never have to charge it. You never have to fill gas. You never have to charge. I mean, it's it's a very, very good concept of a car. Um, I think it works really well, especially in city environments. Like if you live in the city of Chicago or if you live in the city of New York or in the city of LA, you know, it's like if you live out there where you don't really have to worry about driving far distances, I mean, this car is the way to go. Now, when it comes to design, it's very subjective. I personally think it's very weird. It just looks like it's spaceship that has wheels on it. And I, I feel like it'll look so much better if it had four wheels at least instead of the three wheel design that they have. But I mean, that's subjective. Like I said, some people might think this quirkiness is cool. 
you know, that they want to have a car that stands out from the crowd that just looks completely different than what you see on the road. And these guys achieve that. And the reason they designed the car like this isn't because they want to be quirky. Everything came down to mathematics. You know, they're talking drag coefficients. They're talking friction levels and things like that to a point where so the efficiency of this car was really built by geeks and i mean that in the best way possible this was not built by guys that were we core enthusiasts these guys were really striving for uh, that efficiency that uh charging capability that um getting rid of range anxiety and all that when you think about and it's also a composite monocoque for the for the whole chassis right there that you see the guy jumping into so it's actually very very strong when it comes to crash testing so they're claiming that it's stronger than traditional vehicles where the the occupants inside will not be harmed in most of the car crash situations so i mean it's it's an amazing design all around It's, it's amazing, honestly. If you can get over the looks, or if you really like the looks, and this seems like it will change the future of the next generation of cars, especially in the electric sector, and especially for regular everyday drivers. You know, if you're worried about high gas prices right now, and obviously, you know, there can be some laws passed and things like that down the road to bring the gas prices back down, but eventually i think we do have to accept the fact that gasoline is a limited resource whereas in electricity especially solar power is not so limited when it compared to the gasoline power so i think this is going to really really change the way the rest of the um, automotive manufacturers think uh, about their next generation of vehicles uh, especially when this comes out and they see that it's selling, that these things are on the road and people are actually, you know, buying these, trying to, and they're getting used to the look of it. They're getting used to the whole spaceshipness of a car. I mean, it, it does look like it came out of a sci-fi movie, right? So, like, it looks like the wheels are going to go like this and then start, you know, some, like, jetpacks type of thing and then it'll fly away. It's a cool looking car in that sense. So... I'm going to um, actually go over their website as soon as this video is over um, and show you the next part of this car that really attracts uh, me and I think will attract the general population, um, the price. I mean, you look at a car like that with the amount of engineering that goes in and with, you know, the, with Aptera not being a major manufacturer, you think this car is going to cost quite a bit to get into, but their whole company worked towards bringing a car that was efficient and affordable by the general public. So, yeah, let's, uh, as soon as this video is over with, I'm going to switch over to their website here and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about and why, again, I think this car is going to be a huge, huge game changer uh, in both designs of the cars and also how, um, how electric cars are viewed by the general public. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I got to admit, I didn't like it at first sight, but it's grown on me uh, while doing the research on this car um, about how they've designed it overall in every aspect of the vehicle. Oh, and by the way, he's talking right now about right to repair. So that's a huge thing too. You know, Tesla is, Tesla as a company does not want right to repair. So what that means is they don't want you to be able to work on your own car. They want you to bring it to their dealership and have their dealership work on it. Whereas in these guys will provide you with all the parts, all the tools um, to get, well, not tools, but all the manuals basically to repair your own car. So you have the right to repair your own cars. You don't have to always take it to a dealership. So that is very, very um, cool and also stands with their efficiency um, model because it is more efficient for someone to be able to repair their own car if they have the ability to do so. Um, other than bringing it to a dealership, especially when their dealership network is not huge, like Ford, Chevy, you know, BMW, Volkswagen, and things like that. They're not a major corporation like that, so they're not going to be able to have all these dealerships in major cities. 
Best um, electric car in the world. So I having the right to repair is going to be uh, a huge it's advantage. An amazing solution to a lot of today's energy. So yeah, let's uh, uh and it's also just cool. Let me know what you think about this. I think the looks are very subjective. Some people might really like the way it's quirky. Some people really might hate it. Um, personally, I don't like the way it looks at all. Um, but because of the tech behind it, I still like the car as a whole. So yeah, let's move on from this and let's go to their website and I will show you the type of things that this car offers. All right, guys, so now we're gonna take a look at their website. Um, <laughs> it looks more like a tech site than a car site. But yeah, if you look at the car right now, it's in white. It's a very cool looking design, I guess in white. It almost looks like a spaceship. It doesn't really look like a, a Darth Vader helmet anymore. The black really, really resonated Darth Vader to me. I guess the white is more like Stormtrooper if you want to keep with the Star uh, Star Wars <laughs> reference. But I think it does look cooler. It almost kind of gives me the uh, the effect of looking at the BMW i8 when it first came out. It's very futuristic. Um, it's, it's actually pretty neat the more and more I look at it. I don't know if you saw earlier, but... You were you are able to equip this car with a tent in the back. Like the back trunk area is a is a hatchback, and it's pretty big to, um, you know, handle your groceries and little loads here and there. But right here, it's going to show right now. But you could add on this tent. So while your car is parked and you're enjoying the sun out at the beach or out at the park, you could actually have a tent popped up in the back, and you can you know have a picnic with your friends. You could chill out, you know, things like that while your car is charging off the solar panels. So you have a full 40 mile charge back home. I mean, how cool is that? You know, the technology they put into this thing is is way beyond what we've seen so far in the electric car market. And I think that's what's really exciting about this car or spaceship on wheels, whatever you want to call it. And that door, again, reminds me of the i8. Scroll down a little bit here, give you another view of the car. Yeah, look at that side view. Let me move myself over. That's a it's almost like a whale in this sense, right? It's one of those like that the killer whale, um the black and white killer whale thing. <laughs> it kind of looks like that. Um it is three wheels. It's not a four wheel like normal cars that we see. It's more like a Polaris, uh, like I mentioned before. Um and as I said before, 1,000 miles on a single charge, up to, all right? So that depends on the battery pack you choose and capable of 40 miles of solar power driving per day. So um, that's also up to. So there's different options for that as well. And we'll explore that uh, in a little bit here. So this car is pretty awesome. Looks like that is like on a gray, silverish color. I still like the white, I think. Yeah. Kind of looks like a killer whale. I like it. Oh. Let's not miss this part. So electric cars are all about straight up acceleration, right? There's no power to build up. The power is always there. Zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds in a car that looks like that. So you'll be dusting a lot of sports cars off the line, um, zero to 60. And they're not even going to expect this car to be fast. So <laughs> that's another fun factor that you can add to this uh, spaceship. And yeah, here's the tent again that we saw earlier. And these two ladies enjoying their cup of joes. Let's go see what this costs. All right, so we're now in the reserve now option. So this car is meant to be delivered or starting the delivery at the end of this year, end of 2022. You can order this in three different colors or a custom color of your choice. There's an extra charge for that, but they'll contact you when the, you know, time comes to actually paint your car. And then they'll kind of go over the colors that you can do. It is custom color. So there's an additional charge for that. I personally like the white, but yeah, here's that gray silver color, white, and then the black, which is the Darth Vader thing, which, yeah, I mean, whatever you like, whatever your, your view on that is. So this is where the price is going to make the biggest difference. This is all about how many battery packs are going to be in the car. 
So the standard is 250 miles with single battery pack. You pay another $4,000 or so, and you can go up to 400 miles with another battery pack. So, and then the next the third one is going to be another $5,000, and you're looking at 600 miles. And then another $10,000, you're up to 1,000 miles in a single charge. Um, like I said, it is just about how many battery packs you're, they're going to put in there to achieve those miles. Um, 1,000 miles is great, especially if you have the money for it. Why not? You know, just to have that range anxiety go out the window it's it's a great option for most people though the 600 or the 400 mile range should be sufficient enough depending on how you use your vehicle um i think if you do plan on doing this a lot of lo long distance trips 600 is probably the way to go that way you can do a decent amount of your long distance trips in a day before you have to put the thing on the charger um so you know mid 30s or even under 30,000 is where you want to be if I was to purchase this car, I would probably do the 400 mile version. Um, I think that's plenty. That's almost, you know, similar to a car that's getting a full tank of gas every time. And I think that's that's plenty. And if we scroll down to the next part, this is the solo power part. So that battery part is where the car is in complete EV, you know, where you plug into charge and you use the battery to go. The solar power is separate from that. Solar power is what gives us. Um, the 16 to 40 mile range, the solar and roof dash. So the solar roof plus dash. Oh my God, I can't talk. So the roof here gets your solar panel a little bit on the rear bumper and also the dashboard. Let me move myself here. So you can see where the green is lit up. That's where you would be getting solar panels. And with this, you can get 16 miles of range. If We do the hood on top of all that. We're jumping that to 22. Add the rear hatch instead of the hood. We're at 34. But if we do all of it, the hood, the head dash, the roof, and the rear uh, rear glass, uh, we're at 40 miles uh, for solar charge capacity. Honestly, for $900, I think it's well worth the money um, to do all panels. Um, just to get that 40 mile range. Most of the time, if you're just commuting back and forth or just going to the grocery store and back, you're going to be well within the 40 mile range where you're not wasting any energy um with you know electricity like electric bills or or gas bills or anything like that that goes on trying to charge your car so i think that's definitely worth the 900 dollar extra the next part is where we're going to tackle this 0 to 60 3.5 to 5.5 seconds so it comes with a standard front wheel drive system so you can see right here the two front wheels are highlighted in green so that's where the drive wheel is going to be when you do the front wheel drive system it's a 5.50 to 60 which is still a very decent um zero to 60 um any you know any car within the thirty thousand dollar range 5.5 is super fast now with that said add another twenty five hundred dollars to it and the third wheel in the back also becomes a drive wheel so in total giving you a 3.5 second zero to 60 time and also the the handling and the safer capability of an all-wheel drive system so if you're in the more inclement weather areas like the northern states where you get a lot of snow and things like that i think it's definitely worth doing the 2500 um also if you want a car that does you know zero to 16 three three and a half seconds all-wheel drive system for 2500 dollars is not too bad especially you know you're making payments anyway so that's going to be what like additional 50 bucks a month all right, so that pretty much concludes everything except for the interior. So when we go to the interior, this is like the gray, whitish with blue accent. A little boring for me. This is more like a Tesla. I've seen Model 3s with this type of interior where you get a wood green, you know, black and gray, and like you get the center screen and everything. I like this one the best on this car. The little orange accents, the perforated whatever material this is looks really cool. And then again, just like the exterior, you can do customized interior colors as well. That pretty much concludes all the all the options you have in the car right now. Um, in order to order something like this, only thing you have to pay right now is hundred dollars. And with the options I chose, we're at thirty three thousand two hundred dollars. That's the price of a fully loaded Elantra. Like if 
you go out and bought a Hyundai Elantra today, that's what you would pay. Uh, I mean, do you want an Elantra or do you want something like this? I guess that's personal choice, right? But I think for the money you're paying, the value you get out of this car is phenomenal. So yeah, I mean, I again, I, this is a car I learned about just not too long ago when my friend texted me uh, a link to it saying he's interested in buying this. And I started doing some research and I, I got super into it. I wanted to make a video to bring it out to you guys. So tell me what you think. Um, is this something that you would consider as your next car or your entry entry level into the whole electric car scene? Um, is it too quirky for you? Is it too spaceshipy? You know, it's, it doesn't look like a regular car. And I just want to know. See, let's see what your opinions are. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the video. And make sure to hit that notification bell because I put videos up every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, as long as there's nothing, you know, personal coming up from me actually being able to sit here and make a video for you guys. So let's keep this interesting. Um, I'll bring out more videos for you guys in the future as well. So I'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye guys.